So thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. I will be going to the next section, which is also the final section now, the call to action. And we'll be bringing in Frank Asulem and also Marialis to usher us in into that space of calling us all to action concerning digital citizenship, bringing it to the classroom. So Marialis and Franca, if you're here, can just come in. Frank, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Franca. Okay. Hello, <laughs> Hello my confidence. Um, so I'll Hi, just, Franca. How are you? I'll, is it okay? I'll share my screen and then Franca and I can really like talk okay. about um, this next big call to action. So let me just make sure I can share my screen. Sure. Yeah. And then no one make fun of all my tabs that are open. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Can you see this? Yeah, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Oops. Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Okay. So I know that um, when I was on, I had issues trying to get on this morning and I was not able to um, present, but this, I shared my slides, I'll share them again. Um, this would have been my opening keynote, but I will tell you, I'll go, just go back there quickly, that really the idea of the Digital Citizenship Summit, that chapter one began uh, personally as a mother um, when I was just learning side by side with my son. And what happened personally happened simultaneously because I was a faculty member at a university at the University of St. Joe's with working with both undergraduate and graduate students. And this idea of learning side by side. And my chapter one really began with this project, which was the iCitizen uh, project. Um, it was an opportunity, it involved blogging and live tweeting. And I can tell you if you, if you go, I'm using Buncee, which is one of my favorite platforms, but all of these hyperlinks will bring you to different places. Um, but if I could encourage anything for this call to action, and really after hearing so many incredible speakers and our panelists, is the fact about the importance of collaborating. And even if we have obstacles in our way um, around technology and access, um, it can start without the technology. And even if we only have one device, that one device can help um, really amplify the incredible work that's happening in classrooms. I'll just tell you very quickly that this project happened in the fall of 2011. And um, on the left-hand side, those are my undergraduate students. And on the right-hand side of the screen is a classroom. I, I was in Connecticut and this classroom of high school juniors is in, um, in Alabama. And so we were never able to be in the same place at the same time. The entire work that we did was all online. Um, geography um, did not connect us, but tech tools did. And I can tell you, the course was called Please to Tweet You, Are You a Socially Responsible Digital Citizen? And it was really meant for my incoming freshmen. But before the course started, I thought, wouldn't it be great wouldn't it be off like if we could create an authentic audience? And so I blogged about it and I invited, would any other classroom like to join us? And that's a classroom, high school juniors that joined us. If I were to say anything, it is those connections that will really continue to help move our digital citizenship movement forward. It's about the collaboration, the connections and the collaboration that I hope will continue I didn't get to show this, but this is what it looked like in 2017 for our DigiCit Summit when we were actually there. Um, and it was a, it, this was just a wonderful memory of walking, a, a walk down memory lane. And uh, Kemi, if you're still on, here we are. I was able to meet Kemi actually before at um, ISTE, before we actually got, that was in June of 2017. And then this picture right here with my son was then the following month in July, 2017. Um, all of these will be, you, this can, you can have a walk down memory lane when you have this. And I will just go quickly, but I feel like to sum things up, 
my own journey started with digital citizenship. I know that we shared the nine elements and Mike Ribble, and it has evolved. We were in a very, when we began, we were in a very reactive place. I'm very happy that it has evolved into um, a more proactive where it's not a list of don'ts. It's really focused on a list of do's and the five new pillars. Um, and to make sure that you have an opportunity to look at the DigSit commit. But as I shared um, earlier this morning, I've gone from DigSit commit to DigSit impact, which is really focused in on action. And this is perfect with Franca, where we have this call to action. And this is our roadmap, our DigSit impact roadmap that we use with school communities around the world so that learning, and this was even pre-COVID, learning didn't just happen in school. It happened at home, at play, at work. It, had a, it has a very intergenerational approach where we are willing to learn alongside each other. Um, I know that this morning I talked about you know, we don't want to talk having an expert, usually you'd have an expert come in and talk at you, whether that was students or, or parents or teachers in a professional development. This roadmap really expands that from talking at anyone, we really are moving towards learning with you side by side. So our call to action, I'll go really quickly. This is what it would look like in action. Um, and where you can find us, I'm gonna go back to that, this slide in a moment, but Franca, I want you to share about this SDGs because we put on a DigSit Summit Cameroon and as part, as a direct result, um, we had a DigSit SDGs award. And this video, and, and I certainly can show it, but I'd love to hear from Franca because she was on the ground making it happen. It was like identifying real problems and solving them using the global goals. So Franca, you wanna just share your perspective about um, the DigSit Awards in Cameroon and why we want to do this in Nigeria as a direct result of today as our call to action? Effectively, and to my realities, you know, uh, summits like Digital Citizenship Summit um, help us uh, develop a, a digital citizenship mindset. Uh, I first came across the Digital Citizenship Summit in Nigeria, and it was a, a transformative event for me. And at that time, there was a lot of hate speech in Cameroon. So I said, let me come and do it in my country. And so we coined the DigSit SDG project and also the DigSit SDG Awards. Our aim was to identify, unite, celebrate, and reward youths, leaders of organization, and even uh, digital users overall who are using social media and information technology to contribute to the sustainable development goals. Uh, as a friend put it, we wanted to use today's most potent tool, that's a digital technology, to contribute to what the UN considers today's most urgent needs, that is the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. And we also started this DigSit SDGs because we believe that one of the best ways to discourage what is bad is to encourage what is good. Can I say amen to that? Say that, that is it right there, Franco. Will you say that again? Yeah, the best way to discourage what is bad is to encourage what is good. So what we wanted to focus our energy on encouraging and celebrating those that are already uh, using social media and, and technology for good as a way of uh, bringing in those who have been using it for bad to use it for good as well. And during this DigSit SDG Awards and the DigSit SDG project in general, we've been engaging them, putting them into partnership because we know that unity is strength. And events like Dig Digital Citizenship Summit and the DigSit SDG Awards unites them, you know, to keep the, the idea going, the idea of positive use, uh, uh, positive use of social media and technology going. And so that's what the DigSit SDG Awards was about and how it was created. We want them to, use, to leave positive digital footprints because uh, in today's world, uh, social media and technology are, not, are no longer luxuries, but necessities. And while we cannot stop our youth, while we cannot 
prevent exposure to these tools, we can at least encourage the users to use it responsibly because the way information flows nowadays compels us to be responsible in how we use technology. Okay, Franca, can I just, um, can I just highlight what the idea that all it takes is one person to make a difference, one person to raise their hand and say, yes, I want, I want to be part of that change. And then one person becomes many. And you shared that as a direct result of attending when we were there in 2017, as one person, you wanted to bring what you experienced at the DigSit Summit Nigeria in 2017, and you wanted to bring this back to Cameroon. And as one person, you were inspired to bring this back to the youth in Cameroon to solve real, real problems that were happening connected to the global goals, and then to use technology to really amplify that message so we could continue to inspire and empower others to say, oh, I can do that. I want to raise my hand. And so I feel like we are now continuing to connect these dots, Franca, and you are an inspiration. And I am so grateful that our paths have crossed because now here we have an opportunity to come back to DigSit Summit Nigeria. It's like a full circle and an opportunity to say, who's going to continue to lead the way? Who wants to raise their hand and say, we want to be involved in these DigSit SDGs awards? Yeah, effectively, uh, we are going to have Dixit SDG Awards in Nigeria very soon in January, right? And to my list, uh, we're having, uh, we also actually was not just for Cameroonian youths, we actually intended it to be for all youths. But given our means, we could only do it in Cameroon. But now it's such a joy that it's expanding to Nigeria, and I hope we can expand to all countries in Africa and even all over the world. It, absolutely, and I will let you know that there's a sign up here um, and, it, and we wanted to make sure just like how Franca, you did this and you brought it back to your community. Um, we wanted to start, yes, this is gonna be ultimately something for all youth everywhere, no matter where you live, but as a direct result where we can have this call to action, we really wanted it to be, if you're in a classroom, um, or you're an organization, whether a nonprofit or a for-profit, and you are working with youth in Nigeria, we really wanted this particular project, this particular award to be about Nigeria. So we could have like that cause and effect that you joined us as part of the summit today. And here's our call to action. So I will make sure that everyone has um, the link. You can see that little, um, uh, hyperlink there will bring you directly to um, the, the form to sign up. Um, like Franca just shared, we're looking at the end of January for these applications. And then by March, there'll be an announcement. And if I were to go back, I will let you know with that announcement, um, we are actually going to be doing a lot of work within Beluga. And so that our awardees, our classrooms, our nonprofits and for-profits that are working with uh, Nigerian youth are going to be showcased within this platform. I had shared earlier this morning that this is the community that I chose to be a part of um, because of the, specifically because of the work that they were doing around mental health awareness during the month of May. And that's when I said, I want to be involved with this community. But here are just some examples of some conversations that have already happened there. We hosted our sixth annual DigSit Summit in October uh, for 24 hours, and we held it on Beluga. Um, the beautiful part was that when you have a global event, we need to really expand that beyond just English speaking um, presenters. Um, you got to meet Huhenia on the panel. Huhenia, we've been working side by side. She has been doing like all of her sessions, even in the fifth annual, were in Spanish, but we had Portuguese, we had um, a, a session in Arabic. So for part of this program, and Franca, you had SDG awards in French, right? Yes, yes, yes. So we are going to be encouraging whatever that language. I know that we had a presenter for Nigerian Sign Language. For these SDGs in your language, 
please apply. And the other part is I really wanted to bring attention to um, another program that we are launching um, in January. This is different than the SDG. Um, is our global impactor program. So different than an ambassador program, we are looking at a cohort um, and that cohort will be global. And what it provides is it's a 12 week program. It will include um, live sessions as well as um, one on one training with an incredible team. Um, what's listed in here when you get to see this um, it's just the start of the team. We are going to have other mentors, but as we were putting it together, I always want to make sure that you get a yes from people. You don't just put their picture on, <laughs> on, on, on the team, but there are other people like I know that Kemi, um, is definitely going to be part of our team from Nigeria as well, but we would really encourage you as our call to action to continue to want to learn side by side, no matter how old or young you are, no matter what language you speak, no matter what your zip code, where you live, we really have the power as one to become many. And I feel like as part of my entire journey, the most important part is people have self-selected to become part of this movement. And I really believe, I truly believe it's because our focus is on we, not me. And so Franca, is there anything, I'll stop sharing my screen right now, um, that you'd like to, for parting words to continue to inspire for our okay. call to action. Okay, I'd just like to mention that um, because of the deep six, I won an award from Prince Harry, if you remember. Um, yes. 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 The award from Prince, the Commonwealth Award from Prince Harry in London. So I also like to say that uh, the little things we are doing here, we should not take them for granted. And that sometimes when we start, we don't know how it can spread. Like you said, one person can be inspired and many others can be inspired. Now we are 300 in the deep sea, 300 organizations in the deep sea community here in Cameroon. Up to 300, I mean, that's many. And then all of these are leaders of other organizations. So they get to spread the message of digital citizenship within their affairs of influence. And so me, I'll, I'll say, I, I just love being in this community. And like I always say, uh, the best way to discourage what is bad is to encourage what is good. And the best way to stay in what is good is to stay among people who are doing what is good. You, you know, Franca, honestly, I have always felt like that message really has been the people who have self-selected like you have. It's because you lead, you are deliberate. You lead by hand, heart, and mind. And that's really, you know, the, the, the purpose of life, whether that's we're online or we're offline. And our blended approach with hybrid learning and I, I, you are a wonderful model, role model, and I am blessed to be uh, learning uh, and working beside you, honestly. Oh, man, it's such a, it's such a blessing. You know, I, I always thank the Almighty for the time when I met you and Mr. Tola. Oh, oh. You know, Mr. Tola is my second father. Oh, absolutely. We've adopted him. My son has adopted him as a grandfather. Amen to that. He's actually not here and I wish he, I, I, I wish uh, he, he was one of the speakers, you know, when I looked at the timetable and I didn't see him, I was like, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, so this, com this uh, the deep sea community has put me in touch with very wonderful people like you and also like Mr. Tola and also my auntie, uh, Dr. Kemi. And also um, Auntie Confidence, and also all the wonderful people that I listened to talking today. Uh, it, it's been such a wonderful experience. And I pray that this city will just grow and grow and grow. Perhaps next year we'll also be having other languages, maybe Portuguese, Chinese, who knows how far it can go. Absolutely. So Confidence, if you want to jump back into this, this is really our call to action. Um, again, it's like we've reopened the door, invited more people to join us, and I'm really looking forward to um, what has just started, some more seeds that were planted today into going into the future, into 2021, what we will collectively do together.
Okay, let, let me quickly say this. There's, there's an amazing woman here, Mrs. Charity Babatunde. She might not know me, but I met her. At... She has been one of those strong voices in digital citizenship. But what, what can I say? Probably we are just yet to embrace it. Just a few of us in Nigeria, like Dr. Kemi and co have embraced it. She is one person we all have to watch out for. Mrs. Charity Babatunde, she has been talking about this thing for years that I have known her. She doesn't know I follow her. She doesn't know anything about me apart from meeting her once at a safety, school safety um, summit. So she's here. I want us to acknowledge her, thank her for coming here. She's an amazing person. She does what she does without anybody pushing her or she just does what she does for humanity, for students, for kids, for everybody. So she's here with Charity Babatunde. Please let's reach out to her and take her. She's an amazing woman. I can't stop talking about her. She's an amazing person. I know she's here. Ma, are you, are you there? You succeeded in embarrassing, you in embarrassing me. me. I <laughs> Where is this coming from? You know, it's such You don't know me, but I know you very well. I'm in shock, honestly, I'm in shock. But it's my pleasure to do this because I mean, I know that the world has gone digital and my joy is to be able to see that every child is able to thrive and make the best of the opportunity. So thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, so much. Thank you everybody. Thank you. Person. And I know you thank will still push this drive here even more than you did before you're still pushing. And you're just an amazing person. Thank you for being here. So Maria, that's thank you. Just hold her by the neck. She's good at what she does when it comes to digital citizenship. <laughs> so this is a setup, right? I love this. I love this because this is where we continue these connections. It's deliberate. It's meaningful. Um, and it's like connecting the dots and we continue to expand and grow together. And I know that I had said this earlier that on that Beluga platform, and that's the community that I made a conscious choice in May, that that's where I wanted to be. We are going to invite all of the speakers, all of the panelists, because today, you know, it also, we wanted to be mindful of people's times. We want to do a deep dive with each and every one of you so that the learning continues. It's not just an event where we put a check in the box and say, I attended that event, or I went to that assembly, or I heard that talk. How can we continue in a very deliberate way to continue to learn together? So I can't thank you from the bottom of my heart um, that this is just a continuation So I think we all have heard it. We've heard from different amazing speakers. Our, uh, our panelists are also some very group of intelligent. You know, I, ha I, I heard one statement recently said, speak with people who are winning. The conversation is different. And I was like, when I just got to this place, heard everybody talking, I said to myself, these are winners, winners in their spaces. So thank you so much, everyone, for coming in. The call to action, yes, there will be a follow-up mail from Maria Liz and I, to every one person here, to every speaker, um, the panelists, every one person, there'll be a follow-up email to each and every one of us for us to continue this conversation. It's not going to start and uh, end here. We're still going to take it further and bring in more people to the community. And yes, we want to bring out an award, an SDG award, district SDG award from Nigeria. And together we can, I know we can. So thank you so much. Um, Rob, I don't know, I, I feel like calling everybody, Rob, Brad, Elvin, um, Dr. Um, Kemi, um, let me see, Mrs. Charity, Choi Tong, Uwai, everybody, thank you so much for being here. It was an amazing, amazing time being with you all. I'm blessed, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be among change makers. Thank you so much for coming. So thank you guys. <laughs> Wonderful. As we like to say at the DigiSit Summit, that we encourage you all to be the digital change. And honestly, for all of our speakers, and I, you know, I'm just even looking up above who's still here with us. Um, thank you for sharing your time and your voice and your passion and for making a significant difference in your community. And it's just the beginning. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I think um, we've ended successfully the second annual Digital Citizenship Summit, Nigeria. 
I'm proud of everyone here and I'm proud of myself too. I think we all deserve a round of applause for each other. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you, everyone. God bless us all. And bye. Do stay safe. Please stay safe wherever you are. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Bye, Evan. Bye, Cynthia. Bye, Eugenia. Bye, Rob. Bye, Uwai. Mrs. Charity. Bye. Bye, Franca. Bye, Brad. Bye, Dr. Kenny. Jeff. I don't know. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. <laughs>